Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to be chatting with Taylor Nardone today. Taylor has been all over my TikTok for you page, and from the first video I saw, I knew that I needed to interview him. He is born and raised in Massachusetts, and Taylor began his journey in the professional world as a music teacher. After leaving the profession after five years to pursue his passions in entertainment, he's been able to increase his income, find personal and creative freedom in his day-to-day life, and remain grounded in knowing that when we trust that good things will show up, they always do. I cannot wait to hear more about your journey, so Taylor, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. excited. I'm so excited. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. How did you get into teaching music as your career? Yeah, okay. So we'll have to go way back for this one. So (laughs) I was 13 when I first found my love of music. So I was always a very social and fun kid. And then I got really shy when I got to middle school. And I just became very like, I didn't want anyone to see me. You know, it was this whole thing. Yeah. And so I kind of found this love of music and singing that just literally came upon me. It was that intuitive feeling. And so I followed it, but I was very secretive about it for a while. So it was about 16 Mm -hmm. years old that I finally joked that I like came out musically and, you know, was able to be like, you know, this is what I want to do. And so I ended up going off to, uh, to college to study, um, really performing and heading into the music industry. I thought I was going to be headed kind of more so what I'm doing now into, you know, commercial music and in that field, Mm -hmm. um, And about a year into it, I realized that I wanted to give back what I loved about music. So then I headed into uh, the teaching profession or I went into a a music education program and I got my job right out of college and I moved about an hour and a half away from home and I taught there for five years. I taught K through five elementary music. I love that. Honestly, I remember like I so distinctly remember all of my music teachers. I feel like yes. it's such like an important role <laughs> in kids' lives. At least it was for me. Oh my god! Um, and I never was really like super passionate about music, but I just always remember loving all of my music teachers. I feel like they had yeah. such an impact on my life. No, it's um, such a, it was such a fun job. It really was. Yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful. So, what was it that made you want to leave that job then? Well. So it's interesting. So when I had left college, I had gone through a really difficult student teaching experience. And so student teaching is kind of your practicum, right? So it's, you know, you Mm -hmm. go out in the field, you're working with, I worked with an elementary teacher, and then I worked with a high school level teacher. And both placements were just not a great fit. Um, And so what ended up happening was I got through that. And I was like, do I even want to do this? (laughs) Yeah. And so I got out of college. And I remember going to Europe with my best friends. We were backpacking through Europe. It was like a week or two after we were like, we're free, you know? And I'll never forget one night, like being in Italy. And I looked at my friend and I was like, we are not meant to go on this conveyor belt of Mm -hmm. life. And that's the first time that I started to think about that term, like conveyor belt, which I view as the rat race, like society. Yeah. And it was this really deep feeling. And I was like, I just feel like I have to put it off for a bit. And so I came home and I presented that to my loving family who had just paid for me to get this degree. And they were like, excuse me, honey. Um, So they said, listen to you, just got to try it. Just get into a field and then you can make a decision. And so I applied and I kind of just dove in head first. Um, And so what had happened was, you know, I spent five years in the classroom and I did enjoy my job, but I completely neglected myself. And so I was Mm -hmm. extremely out of alignment. And that also means out of alignment with who I was and what I desired. There was a whole part of me that wanted to pursue, you know, entertainment, whether it was acting, singing, all this stuff. And even though I was singing in in our music class, that's not singing, singing, you know, like that was consuming my entire existence. And so what ended up happening is, Um, actually about a year before I left the classroom, I started getting my license to become a general education teacher. I thought I was going to leave teaching music to go do, you know, second or third grade in the classroom. Mm. And I remember I got the license and I finished the program. I was working so hard that last year. I was working around the clock. I was, you know, giving up my prep periods at school to go observe in other classrooms. It was insane. My principal gave me the license. And I remember having this feeling of like, wait, do I want this? Wait, is whoa, what's going on? And it was this like swirling insanity in my head. And it ended up being a really big spiritual awakening. And I think that was the universe saying, okay, it's time. And so I just felt this deep calling to leave. 
And it wasn't because it was bad. It wasn't because of anything mm. like that. It was this, it was a look forward, not backwards. It was like, you need to yeah. step into this unknown space. You need to jump and you're going to be caught. And I've always listened to that. I've had it happen a few times in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just remember looking up and I said, okay, I'll do this, but you need to give me a sign. And I got sign after, I still have the document with 50 signs within the next really? couple of weeks. It was unbelievable. The things that were like coming into my reality. And so I really thought about it. And um, about two months after I said, let me wait till the school year ends so I can breathe a little bit. And, you know, maybe I'm just tired, right? Maybe do I actually want to give up, you know, my career right now and go do this for who knows what? Um, mm. And it just got stronger. And so um, I resigned in July and the rest is history. Yeah, that is amazing. And I'm sure relatable to a lot of people. I'm curious, what were some of those signs that you got after you asked for a sign? Oh my gosh. So one of them that was so funny was I had followed this YouTuber for a couple of years. Her name is Clancy Burke and I love her. And she was a news reporter and her entire channel was based off of her as a news reporter. Now this girl, apparently I thought loved her job, whatever. I watched her every week. She posted twice a week, huge following. This was like two days after she literally posted a video. She goes, I quit my job as a TV news reporter. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. This girl that I watched religiously. And she goes, we're yeah. going to go travel for a year. She goes, I'm pursuing YouTube. I'm, we're going to do an Airbnb in a different city every month. And we're traveling. And I was like, oh my God. And then it was like little things. Like I had applied to a couple of jobs within the district to go teach general education that everyone was like, you're a shoe him. And somehow I didn't even get a response from them. Mm. Like they had already had someone internally that was filled. And I was like, okay. And then there were a bunch of little synchronicities. You know, I had looked up this, um, you know, I was looking at podcasts on manifesting and I found, you know, this woman who I was like, wow, I really, really love your podcast. And I was like, all right, let me go follow her on Instagram. She follows me back. And all of a sudden we're chatting and she goes, let's book a call. And we had an hour long free call. And she was like, I, I see what's happening right now. And she kind of gave me some clarity. So it was just, it was a bunch of things over and over that kept just lining up and just reinforcing, um, you know, what I was feeling. But I should look back at that list, actually. That'd be pretty cool. I still have yeah. it. It's in my Google Docs. And it's it's like two pages long because it's <laughs> wild, the synchronicities that were coming through. I know. It's so crazy how stuff like that will start to happen. And I think a lot of us get stuck in that place where we feel that pull, right? We know mm -hmm. that like we're made for something more. It's time to make a change. But then like our fears stop us from doing that. We're like, well, it's not logical. It's not rational. I don't have money saved up or whatever the reason is why we feel like we can't make that change. And then we almost start to like – I call it gaslighting ourselves, honestly, is what it feels like, because Absolutely. then we'll start thinking like, oh, well, maybe, you know, my job isn't that bad. My job's, if you're not leaving because you hate your job, right, then it's easy to get sucked into like, well, I have a great job. Why would I want to leave? Or am I being ungrateful for wanting to leave this job, like this great mm -hmm. job that I have, especially in a time where people are getting laid off, right? I should be grateful to have this job or you know, whatever it is that kind of gets us sucked back in, like maybe I just need a vacation, maybe I'm just tired, when you know deep down that like that's not really what's going on. So Absolutely. do you have any advice for someone who's kind of stuck in that cycle oh, so of do. knowing so that it's time, but like yeah. really just getting sucked back mm -hmm. in? Well, I have so many things. I First of all, I, I will say you know, if there's any purpose in anything on this earth, which I believe there absolutely is, we're here to evolve and you're here to grow. Growth is never going to come within comfort. There's always going to be discomfort and there has to be. And so I would challenge people to consider that perhaps your fear is just the entryway. It's the doorway. Like you have to enter the door. You have to mm. go past that fear. Anything big that you've done, there was always a sense of reservation or hesitation, but that's your mind just trying to protect you. Your brain's just doing its job. It doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. It's literally saying, oh my God, is there danger? You just have to tell yourself, there's no danger. Yeah. I'm going to be fine. I'm, I'm so protected. I know good things are coming to me. So 
it's a reframing of your perspective with that um, and, and kind of this expectation that things always will work out for you. You know, I think we in, in society, we tend to have, or at least we're, we're, fear is pushed on us all the time for a reason, right? It keeps you mm-hmm. very stuck. Um, but fear is an emotion. And so the same fear that you can feel in one moment, you could then feel joy in the next moment. Like sometimes I describe to people, I'm like, if you had everybody in my apartment right now, everyone in one room together, we'd all be experiencing what was in front of us very differently because we're in our heads. It doesn't change the reality of what's outside of us, but we're experiencing it differently. And so all of a sudden, then you're acting based upon those thoughts. So my challenge is just shift shift your perspective and shift those thoughts a little bit and start small. You know, when you, when you see fear creep in, allow yourself to feel that, honor that, and then you shift it and say, okay, I got that out now. I got that out. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to move forward. Okay. And, and then thinking to yourself, it's not like a what could go wrong type of situation. It's literally like, well, what if I don't do this? Mm-hmm. Like, I really have a desire to go in this direction. Can I risk not doing it? Yes. Can I risk my happiness that much? Can I risk my well-being? Like, do you want to risk that? So people kind of need to weigh the odds here. And the odds always turn in the favor of taking taking the leap. It always does, you know. <laughs> and And the thing is, is, you know, I was given so many signs, but it didn't mean that it was going to do it for me. That was the universe saying, hey, we'll give you those signs. You still need to jump, Mm -hmm. you know? And it is one of those moments where you say, all right, I got to do this. And when you do, you grow so much as a person. You evolve so much. And when you commit to yourself that much and you say, I'm going to follow what I know my soul is telling me to do, that's just your soul trying to get to the front of the line and say, yes, this is what I want to be doing. The universe literally will start to shower you with, you've got this. We told you, you're doing this. Like the other day, you know, I bought a course that is a lot of money and I was really excited about this course, a kind of a personal development, spiritual course. And, you know, I thought about taking it for about a year and, you know, both times that I tried to get in, I missed the deadline somehow by a day. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this just not be time. The other day I saw it and I said to myself, you know what? We have to do this. It was just presented. We have to do this. I felt so aligned, so good about it. Three minutes later, I got an email from a brand that I had worked with back in the fall that wanted to hire me again for like eight months, you know, and it's, it's crazy the way that stuff happens. And I really think it's the universe saying you have to trust. So yeah. it's this weird, it's this weird push and pull because sometimes we want all of it to be shown to us first, but it's never going to be. Mm-hmm. You'll get the feeling of what it could be, but we still have to do our part and jump. So sometimes it's really realizing that it's fear is literally just a feeling. And as yeah. easily as you can tap into fear, you can tap into the good things too. Yeah. So just starting to reprogram and focus on the good. Mm, I love that advice so much. And I think kind of what it was for me is like my fear of not taking the leap was yeah. stronger than my fear of the unknown, right? Like my fear of what if it doesn't work out? What's going to happen? What if I don't make enough money? All of those fears didn't really matter to me when I thought about like, what if I didn't, what if I didn't try though? What if I had to get to the end of my life and wonder what could mm-hmm. have happened? Absolutely. And, and first of all, too, you know, if anyone's listening to this and you're in your 50s, 60s, whatever, or your 30s, 40s, it is never too late to change. You have mm-hmm. full autonomy at every single point in time in your life to make a change. You can yeah. literally be driving down the same street you drive down every day. And today you decide to turn right instead of left. At any point in time, you can literally change what you're doing. And so that can be very overwhelming for people sometimes. But And I think the issue is sometimes it's easier for us to think that we're locked into something. It kind of validates why we're doing it, but we have to really look past that and say, you know what? I know I can change my circumstances. And the other thing too, is I remember thinking to myself as well about the financial piece. And I think sometimes when we make a big decision or we have fear about taking a leap, we somehow assume that once we leap, we're not going to have our brain anymore. Yeah. (laughs) And it's hysterical because it's like, you know, once you take that leap, like you'll still be able to think you'll still like, (laughs) if you need money, you'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Like you'll still have a, you'll still be able to maneuver your path and stuff. I think sometimes it's like, you know, we just need to see, you know, it's like we're on point A and we expect to see B through Z. It's like you, Mm -hmm. it's someone described it to me once as a dark staircase, you know, the steps are there. You just have to go one by one. It doesn't mean you're going to see all of them, but that takes away the fun of it. It's yeah. fun when it's a surprise, you know, you wouldn't want every, I think Abraham Hicks once described it as you wouldn't want every food that you're ever going to love in your life to be presented right now at all times. It takes out all of the joy and the fun of trying these foods and these experiences. So mm. I think it's, it's, it's getting excited about 
what's going to come to you, the excitement yeah. of it. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I mean, our brain always goes to worst case scenario, right? It's like, mm-hmm. what if I quit my job and I don't make any money and then I just become homeless and like I never right. make any money again? It's like, that's not going to happen because right. before you get to that point, you're yeah. going to do something about it, right? You're going to apply for jobs. Absolutely. You're going to go back to what you were doing. Like literally the worst case scenario is that you just go back to what you're doing right now. <laughs> right, like, right. And rarely so would that it's worth happen. just seeing what other possibilities are out there, you know? Absolutely. And again, just trusting that there are things that are going to come to you, opportunities, all of this, that you would have no clue. I mean, imagine if, you know, I told my parents at, you know, six years old, like when I'm 28, I'm going to be working, I'm going to work for brands as an influencer on this app called TikTok. They'd be like, what What are you like? It doesn't exist yet. Like there's going to be things that are created. There's, you know, I, I kind of think of it as like, there's rooms that are just waiting for you and mm-hmm. they haven't been created yet. You know, someone's, um, speech that I was so moved by this year at the Grammys was Lizzo's because I was thinking about Lizzo and how her and who she is and what she brings to the table really like it she she literally would not have fitted the mold that society was placing around artists five or ten years ago and now look at her and so you can't look at what's happening now and assume that these circumstances are going to be with you for the rest of your life they're just not going to be Mm -hmm. and so that's really powerful and liberating too it's like every day when you wake up you're like oh what am I working yeah (laughs) yeah so when you took the leap and quit your job did you have a plan in mind of what you were going to do did you have any type of like job or income stream lined up or was it just like I'm going to take this leap that I'm feeling called into and trust that the universe is going to bring me the right opportunities Yeah. So I did have a light plan. So I was working as a server um, part-time at a restaurant for about a year on the weekends. And I was, I already, it was the summertime. So I was working there a little bit more full-time. And so I basically just asked them, I said, Hey, can you, can you throw me on a little bit more? And they were like, Mm -hmm. sure. And they were super supportive of it. And so I work three days a week, maybe four sometimes depends. Um, And so that's, you know, it's been fine. And I think the only mini concern I had was like, right, am I going to be able to match my income? And it happened so unbelievably easy. And, I, and most of the time I'm making more than I was making before as, mm-hmm. as a teacher. Um, so I did have that light plan. Now, could I have jumped without one? Absolutely. Because there would have been something would have presented itself or I would have found a solution. hundred percent, you know, yeah. at some point this year, I'll most likely be leaving that job as well because I'll be heading off to pursue more full-time what I'm doing, but things are presented to us right when we need them. You know, the people I work with all of a sudden, I realize all of this new staff, like, they were all spiritual. They were all on the same mm-hmm. path that I was on. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, I get it. I see it. <laughs> you know? So the universe is like, hey, we got you money wise and let's put you around some cool people. You know, I have a friend that just left her job at Apple, you know, to go open her um, a health and wellness center. And she's on the mm-hmm. same path I'm at. And her and I are so connected throughout this. So I just kind of view it all as a gift. But anyways, um, you know, you can leave without an actionable plan because you will, something will, if you're open, if you are literally open to what is supposed to come to you, you'll be absolutely fine. But I tell people, I'm like, financially, if you're, you know, I don't have kids, I'm not married or anything, but if, you know, the, the job I work at, at the restaurant, I mean, we're just open during the day. So it's pretty much regular work hours, like seven, you know, seven or eight to three o'clock. I'm like, there are going to be things that you can't, you know, anticipate that will come in that will, you know, help you in your situation. Um, and financially will be so easy. So, yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you, you know, like you said, these opportunities always show up at the right time. Have you found that to be a recurring theme in your journey in this past, I don't know, what, nine months since you left? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But partially because I I look for, I I feel like I've almost reprogrammed my mind now to always see solutions instead of mm-hmm. seeing the problems. You know, it's funny. I sometimes I think of it as like the new car syndrome. It's like you really want this like orange Nissan, and all of a sudden you're on the highway and you see them everywhere. And there's yeah. the same amount of freaking orange Nissans as there always have been. You're just focused on it. So when you shift that way, I see solutions everywhere. It's not that everything that comes into my life at all moments in time are favorable, but everything's neutral until you give it value. So if something's unfavorable, you just let it pass, and then mm-hmm. you focus on what's coming ahead of you. So I think that that's the big difference for me now. Is you know. At all points in time, I'm seeing things work out, but they always have been. Sometimes I just ignored it, you know? Yeah. What you focus on and like your mindset is so important. It literally- everything. It is literally- It creates 
the yeah. reality that's in front of you, right? Because it whatever your reality is, is your reality, whatever is occurring. If you're just focusing on the things that are a problem, the things that are negative, then you're going to experience that in a very negative way. You're going to have a negative experience. But in the same situation, you could be just shifting to focus on the positives, the possibilities, the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you feel like you have all these opportunities in front of you. You have the same opportunities (laughs) and the same challenges. And it's just about what you're focusing on. Truly. And and then, you know, you know, and what happens is when we see the negative in something, then we make decisions based upon that negative. And then before you know mm-hmm. it, this beautiful path that you were on when you were aligned and trusting the world, you are so far off of it in California now that yeah. you're like, I don't even know how to get back there because you've you've kept going off the path because you you're I'm scared. Oh, I gotta go this way. I'm scared. It's like mm-hmm. you just you literally you just ignore all of that. Fear, it just has no there's literally there's no point unless there's a truck coming at you, there is no point. Literally, yeah. it is fight or flight. Like if if someone was trying to attack me, right? Yeah, I'd, be sad, I'd run. You know, I'd <laughs> yeah. be sad. I'd probably bounce unless I was like, I'm like no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but I'd bounce. You know. But like, there's no if there's no imminent fear visually right in front of you, then there is literally nothing for you to be scared of. And so a lot of that too is being out of the present moment. Like when we're literally mm-hmm. in the present moment, you can't really have anxiety because anxiety is often something that what hasn't happened yet. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you're thinking about something that hasn't happened, and then you, your identity that you think you have is from your past. It's it's a whole mess. Mm-hmm. It's like we are always just here right now as we are, and there's solutions that are presented everywhere at all times. Yeah. So were there ever any moments that you experienced some like a major challenge or a moment where you felt like maybe this isn't going to work out, and that fear really crept in? Absolutely. So when I kind of got out of alignment at times and I kind of dipped down and I felt that I was lost, like I felt lost at mm-hmm. times over over this chunk of time because my identity was so tied with being an educator. And I was like, well, who am I? And so in those moments, I was like, well, what, you know, I just say to myself, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What direction am I going? But then I realized, I'm like, you know what? I'm not saying that feeling good. I'm saying that as a result of me just being a little bit off my game right now. So I got to honor the fact that that's coming through me. And then when I get back to myself, truly feeling like myself, if those feelings continued where I said, wow, I'm ready to head into a classroom again, I would listen to them, but they never do. Mm. You know, So those moments are challenging in the sense that when you tend to take a leap like this, you are literally pulling out the rug from underneath you. So that safety net that you had with your identity is gone. But then you start to realize and the beautiful growth happens that you don't need to really be fulfilled by anything. You're whole exactly as you are. Everything else is just enhancing your experience. So mm-hmm. those moments, definitely the personal growth has been, you know, beautiful and difficult at the same time because growing pains absolutely exist. Um, you know, but in terms of, I, I haven't had anything, um, you know, necessarily creep into my 3D that that was like, oh my God, this is a huge problem. You know what I mean? Like things have yeah. worked out, but I think it's it's more of a mental thing that can kind of get you. Yeah, for sure. So how would you say that your life has changed? What's different now that you're not teaching, you're not in this job, you're not on that, oh my gosh, what did you call it? Treadmill <laughs> anymore? Conveyor belt. Conveyor, conveyor belt, yeah. belt anymore. What is different just in your day-to-day life now? You know, I went to a personal training um, consultation the other day and the the guy was, you know, checking off all these things, asking me questions. He goes, all right, so what's your stress level? Just like one to 10. And I was like, shoot, I was like, two, <laughs> one. I was like, I got like, <laughs> so I think the biggest change is I really am never stressed. And that, yeah. and I genuinely mean that. And I think it's been so long since I've, experience that constant stressful feeling of, oh my God, there's something coming. Like it just, everything pulling me out of the present moment that it's like, now I look and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really need to appreciate that a little bit. So no, I, I, I think honestly, I'm balanced for the first time in my life. I feel like I'm more whole. I'm the biggest expression of who I am. I'm, you know, I just am able to exist and not feel like I have to be chasing something or running. I can just be. So I think my life is very, very simple. You know, I was even telling someone the other day, I was like, the, the best moments that I've had over the past year or nine months, whatever, since I've left, hasn't been this traveling or going this and that. I am, I'm starting to do a little bit of that, but 
it's literally been the peaceful moments of, you know, walking by the beach in the morning or sitting with my cup mm-hmm. of coffee and just listening to the birds and being like, I don't have anywhere to be other than right here. I don't have anything to worry about. And there's things that I could try and worry about. Yeah. But I think it's, you know, once you start to reset your nervous system, once you leave the grind, mm-hmm. like you're like, oh my God, things start to really, really shift. So that's been huge. Yeah. Were there any like mentors that you had, or I know you were talking about some people that you might have followed on social media. Was there anyone who really kind of helped guide you, I guess? Absolutely, that made you yeah. feel a little bit more safe on this journey? Yeah. So so the interesting thing about it is when you have kind of a big life change coming or a big leap that's probably going to happen for you, the universe will show you people first that are doing mm-hmm. it right before you. And they just give a little, little handoff. And so a couple of years back, it was, I think, March of 2021, there was this video that I saw on YouTube. This girl had quit her job without a plan. Kind of the first video I've been presented with on that topic that's now coming up a lot more. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was following her journey. Wasn't considering that at the time, but I was kind of like, oh, you know, so that kind of struck at me. And then I had a couple of good friends that I met online that, you know, we had chatted so frequently that were probably a year or two ahead of me kind of in their spiritual journey. And I was like, Mm -hmm. wow, I feel like I'm experiencing that too. So we would then talk, you know? Um, So, so many people and so many people have come into my life. You're going to attract so many people that, that have come into my life that I'm like, wow, you're experiencing something similar. You, you feel this way. So the universe just sent me support after support, but there were probably three or four people that I had noticed that, you know, were experiencing or had experienced what I was experiencing at the time, who I was kind of leaning on. And they, and they will literally be handed to you on a silver platter. You don't It's a crazy, that's definitely been my experience too. And I also can't tell you how many people will message me and be like, I have been feeling this way, stuck in my job for months. And, you know, your podcast came up on my for you page or whatever, like, came up on my Spotify recommended like it uh-huh. just always happens exactly at the right time like the right, right time before it it's time for you to make that leap you know and that's the best part and then you get to say to yourself wow so I really do just get to sit back and find the joy in it it will be presented to me life can be easy mm-hmm. you know I don't know if any you know if, if you listen to or if anyone listening right now has ever heard of Abraham Hicks I would highly yeah. recommend everyone go listen to Abraham because they will literally tell you just be like, what do you want? What do you need to do? If you want more money, go to the beach, (laughs) Like, just be, find joy, be happy, focus on, you know, and then you realize you're like, wow, I can just go through life with ease. It's just so the opposite of what we've been taught, but life can be so beautiful and joyful for you. Once you let go, you just gotta let go. It really is. So the exact opposite of what we're taught. And I think that's something that I struggled with for a long time and honestly still do sometimes because my whole life, right? It's like, if you want to be successful, you have to work hard. You know, Mm -hmm. if you want to make more money, then you have to put in more hours and shifting that, especially now as a business owner to a point where, no, if I want to scale my business, trading time for money is actually the most ineffective way to do that because I only have so much time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I actually need to be doing something very different if I do want to grow my business, if I do want to make more money. This can't be the only way, you know? Absolutely. And I think too, I, money mindset is a huge thing for people too. And, and here's what yeah. I would say. Listen, I, I grew up with a very neutral perspective around money. Um, the privilege that we have comes from not necessarily what we have, but it's the mindset around it, right? So people that grew up in poverty, it's not that you can't escape that, but it's you have this ingrained trauma and perspective rooted within it. And it's nobody's fault. It's literally, well, yeah. I mean, it's there's a system that needs to be, you know, well, yeah. taken over, you know. <laughs> But, um, but it's, it's really, I mean, that's what gets really difficult about it. So I, I always am thankful that I grew up with kind of a neutral perspective around money. But even then I still had these beliefs that I was like, oh, like, you know, oh, it's, it's greedy to have, mm-hmm. you know, enough money where you feel content, which is crazy. You know, it's like, you, yeah. need, you need money, but money is literally like, we put so much value on this thing mm-hmm. that is just here as a tool for you. Um, but I, I will say for anyone listening, you know, I was making like $55,000 after five years in the classroom and having left the profession, I am floored at how much money there is to just have that there's, you, you can make money in such 
unbelievably simple ways and you can monetize so many things in this world. And, and I would encourage everyone to get off of the mindset of, or the, or the fixed perspective they have on a certain amount of money, you know, Mm -hmm. for people to, to make, you know, six figures in their business. I, you know, I would, I mean, I see people do it literally every day, left and right. So it is so, so possible that level of financial freedom and it's so well deserved for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy to think about like our perspective about what is a lot of money to make in a year is just based on really whatever profession you're in and whatever you think is possible for you to make. Right. Yeah. And like, I know, you know, there's the stereotype of like the broke teacher, like teachers don't make a lot of money, which one, they should make more money than they make for sure. But also it's, it's crazy to think about how like $55,000 at one point was your yearly salary. There are people who make that in a month. Like there are people who make that in a a, a week, in a day, like, and to some people that's not a lot of money at all. Because it's all neutral until we give it that right. value, right? It's literally, money is, it's literally just there, you know? I was thinking to myself the other day, I was like, I don't really need to be making like millions upon me. I mean, that'd be kind of nice. I, I mean, it'd be, be nice. Tens <laughs> of millions of dollars, you know, I'd probably, I'd give it away, you know? But, uh, <laughs> but, but even just the, the amount that we have, yeah, it's just based upon what we've been presented and why what we've been presented, why is that the gospel truth of our worth? We tie mm-hmm. money to our worth. It has nothing yeah. to do with you. What you desire, you are absolutely able to have. Once you match that vibration and that feeling, like what does it feel like when I have that financial freedom? What am I going to be able to do? What am I going to use it for? The more that you kind of saturate in that, you're going to find that it's flowing to you left and right. And it, it literally really does. I've had crazy things happen regarding money. Oh, wild. same. Yeah. yeah. I've had, I think I just recorded an episode on this a couple of weeks ago. Um, at, like I was looking back on my journey from when I started my business and all of just the crazy random ways that money would always come in exactly when up? I needed it to. Like it literally it just, just up? like things I couldn't have ever predicted, right? Like obviously I'm building a business. I'm actively creating income streams and yet money will find me in the most random ways. <laughs> it does. It absolutely does. And it's it's yeah. so beautiful to think to yourself again with that openness of just, I can't wait to see how it shows up. I cannot mm-hmm. wait to see how it shows up. And, you know, I think something important too is, you know, as people start to go through this process of, you know, okay, I'm ready to take a leap and I'm ready for things to come to me. We have no say and how or when that happens in terms of, I, we have full autonomy to make a leap, but in terms of things that you want to draw in, yeah. how or when is all up in the air, but that's the absolute best part. It's like a surprise party. You just mm-hmm. don't know it's going to come, you know, but it will show up and it will show up right on time. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, like a lot of things in our life where we just have that faith, right? Where we don't mm-hmm. even question whether it's going to happen and we're not really concerned about where or when. We just know it is, right? It just is. Absolutely. And for some reason, we get sto- so stuck on applying that same concept to money, right? Like I always think about it. I always compare it to like relationships because mm-hmm. for me, I'm like, I've never, I've never doubted that I'm going to find my person, right? I've never doubted that someday I'm going to get married and I'm going to find my soulmate, if you believe in soulmates. And I don't, I've never like actively been like, oh, I need to go out and find them. Like I need to look for them. I'm like, no, they're going to come into my life at the right time. And that's the best feeling. And here I'm engaged now for those of you who don't know, (laughs) but but it's like, I've never, ever questioned that. Right. So why wouldn't I apply the same mindset to money of, or to my business or to any goal I have? Right. I know I'm going to have a successful business And I don't necessarily know every step that's going to get me there or exactly when I'm going to hit six figures or seven figures or whatever big milestone we've built up in our minds. But I can trust that it's going to happen at the right time. And then I can just say yes to the opportunities that feel good for me and see what starts to show up, you know? And I think the the such an important piece of what you were just saying too is is really being unattached to the outcome. Mm -hmm. That is how you do it. You know, it is, you can sit here and you know, you think about all of the beautiful things that are coming your way and you could be grounded in that. Gosh, I am so grateful for where I am right now. Look at all that's been provided for me. Look at how the dots have connected themselves my entire life. I really just get to sit back and see how this is going to happen. And when you release the expectation that you have about how, when, or this and that, the specifics, 
then it's all just a fun surprise. I'm telling you, it is like yeah. icing on the cake and it just makes it so fun. And then you're just seeing all these little synchronicities because you ha- you literally are, you aren't walking through with this like blind, like it has to be this. It's like, yeah. it's going to be what it is. And I know <laughs> it's on its way. And ooh, I just can't wait to see how it's done. Yeah, and that, that is, I'm telling you, it is like, it just, it gives me chills just thinking about it. It is the <laughs> best way, I, I, I really think, to live your life if you just go about it like that. Just be unattached to that outcome. Know it's on its way. And then you get to enjoy it every step of the way. I think that's how we're meant to be living. But 100%, 100%. we've just convinced ourselves that it's not that easy, you know? I completely agree. What would you say is the biggest thing that you have learned on this journey so far? I think the pillar of all of this has to do with self-love and self-worth. And so I would really encourage everyone to look inside a little bit, do some digging, do a little shadow work, you know, take a look and go, okay, you know, what, what things have, have happened in my life that have maybe changed the way I think and how can I, how can I start to reprogram that? Because I am so worthy simply because I exist. And mm-hmm. so I think there's ways sometimes that we self-sabotage ourselves when we think that we're not worthy of something and things start to get so good. And then we all of a sudden something yeah. happens. It's like, interesting. The Big Leap is a really good book on that too. So I would say really, if you can dive into loving yourself and loving who you are and just embracing every bit of you as you are now and celebrating you for how you've been able to survive up until this point and it just propels you so far forward and you're able to just exude such a light that changes and impacts people around you for the better. So I would say that that's been the most important and I think the biggest thing that I've experienced since I left. I love that. Do you have any big goals on the horizon? Anything that's coming up that you are excited about or that you really want to do? Or is it mostly just seeing what life brings, (laughs) seeing the next opportunity that life brings your way? Yeah, so much of it is seeing the opportunity. I love it. I mean, there's things I'm, you know, I'm working on getting, you know, my singing kind of back in check for myself. It's been a long time since I performed. And so that's been beautiful, even the past couple months. Mm. to see how that synchronicity has come wait a sec i have to tell the story real quick you guys (laughs) are gonna freak out okay (laughs) so (laughs) talk about synchronicity so my singing journey is a whole separate journey it has it's been 10 years in the making uh, since i've really felt good being up on a stage singing so it's been a long time but i had a moment in january where i said okay i said this is the highest expression of who i am i have to get back into it and so i've really been on top of it i'm studying with my amazing teacher and you know i'm like okay And I started to really blend the mindset work I've been doing with my voice. And it's been like, oh my gosh, like I can see, I'm like, it's, it's, I'm, you know, things are shifting so much. So anyways, I was watching American Idol about a month ago and I think it was the first episode. And I was like, oh, let me catch it. I love to watch it, you know, and it will inspire me a little bit. So I watched the first contestant. I'm like, okay, oh, that's so cool. You know, and I mute the TV and I'm like, you know what, let me, I was like, no one's home right now. Let me sing a little bit, you know? So I start singing. I'm like envisioning if I'm in front of the judges, whatever. And I start singing the most random song. It's called A Song For You by Leon Russell. It was kind of big in the seventies. And I love that song. And it's always been something, I mean, many years ago that I sang and it was kind of like my, my song. So I'm singing mm-hmm. it. First time I'm singing it in a while. I'm going, okay, it doesn't sound too bad. So anyways, then I go back down to the TV. I unmute the second contestants on what song do you think she was singing? And let me tell you something, not only was she singing the same song, when I was singing it before, I was like, wow, I'm singing it a little bit higher than I remember. We were singing it in the exact same key. That's and so the wild. odds of that happening, it was insane. And so, I mean, you could, you could take that to mean anything. I <laughs> always view those moments as I'm on the right path, onward I go. And it's, Maybe, it's beautiful. <laughs> Maybe American Idol is your next step. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, I, I had some close encounters with Idol back in the day. So you never know, but it was, it was a moment. So things like that, when those things happen, it's just, you just, you just laugh, look up and go, I love it. You know? Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. All right. Taylor, what is your biggest piece of advice for the person listening who is feeling stuck in their job right now? They're feeling that pull that it's time to make a change, but they are scared to take the leap. I would say to you that you have every ability to make that change. And when you trust, you will be caught. The net is right there. And there are going to be things that are going to happen that you can't predict that are going to be absolutely magical. And so I want you to get excited about what's going to come. And 
anchor into that excitement and walk into each day with that and just watch the opportunities come. So you can do this. Hope is listening. <laughs> I love that so much. Taylor, thank you again for coming on and sharing your journey. And where can the listeners find you if they want to connect with you and continue to follow along? Yeah, so um, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. My handle is Taylor Ryan Nardoni. Um, and I am on there quite often. So definitely you can always reach out, send me a message, but I am on there posting many, many things. It's worth the follow on TikTok. I don't <laughs> follow you, you on Instagram, but I will. But <laughs> you are you literally just started popping up on my TikTok feed and I was just like, I need to know more about his <laughs> story. Like I just need to follow this person. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you again for coming on, for sharing all of that, your story, your advice. For the listeners, I'm sure there's someone out there who's maybe this was their sign that they needed. So Absolutely. thank you for coming on, Taylor. My pleasure. Thank you.